I'm joined on this Google Hangout by Andrew Jones, who's talking to me from, well, I didn't ask you, where in California are you, Andrew? We're, uh, I'm in Los Angeles right now. In Los Angeles. Well, thanks for joining us on this. We're going to be talking about The Haunting of Cell Block 11, or yes. if some folks might remember it, uh, it was called Apparitional for a while when it came out, right? Right, yeah. It wasn't until um, distributors got involved that they thought, you know, we'd really rather change the name. And it, and it wasn't because they didn't like the name. It's just, it's all marketing. They just figure it's got to have those buzzwords in it, like haunting. And, and, and the other fun funny thing about it was that um, the foreign distributor just said, there's no translation for apparitional, so we need to come up with something else. So that's really how that started. Yeah, uh, and uh, the reason we're going to be talking about this uh, in a Missouri context is that you filmed much of this uh, movie at Missouri State Penitentiary. Now, how did that come to happen? Um, I, once I knew that I, I needed a prison, I started kind of scouting online um, location databases, and I was, you know, looking at a lot of different prisons around the country. I actually went and visited some of them. Um, but I, you know, started talking to Chris Wilson over at the Convention and Visitors Bureau, and he just really told me everything that they've got to offer there, and just kept insisting that I come in and, and take a look at it. And honestly, once I hit Jefferson City, once I just was on that bridge going over, I knew, I just felt it. I knew this is the place. And then once I saw the prison, yeah, it was, it was a done deal. And uh, now most of the film was shot there. You did do some shooting back, uh, back west, right? Yeah, we did. We we shot really. Um, yeah, the majority of the film was shot out in Jefferson City, but then we came back and shot um, in Los Angeles as well. So, uh, and what has happened now? I should bring folks up to speed. You shot the film. I'm going off the top of my head here. End of 2012, first part of 2013, right? Right, <clears throat> right. Um, and that's how long it takes, really. And, and we actually moved very quickly, but it just opened July 1st, uh, just a couple days ago on video on demand, that's how people can get it. And that was always the intention too, was never to do a theatrical. This is a, a experiment in, in micro budget filmmaking, trying to do it at a, at a high quality level. So um, yeah, we shot at the end of 2012 and um, went right into uh, post-production, editing, special effects, music scoring, <clears throat> and then um, it's finally, uh, and then, then you start shopping it and finding a distributor and then it, then it's a whole process of they have to do what, what they need to do to uh, set it up with all the VOD uh, outlets. So it, it takes a long time. So it's been about a year and a half for us and um, but that's actually a, a kind of fast. We, we moved pretty quickly. And when you talk about uh, an experiment in low budget filmmaking, I don't think a lot of folks are going to realize that. What was the budget on this film? Um, <clears throat> I actually don't like to talk about the budget because it was so low, um, and I don't want to like diminish the value of the film, but um, it was low. It was very low. It, well, and, and, and I, the reason I bring it up is to say that I, I don't think they're going to recognize that it was a low-budget film because the, the special effects are very good. Uh, I'm not much of a film critic, but I'll tell you one thing that turns me off quickly about special effects is if they're kind of overdone and cheesy and if a film feels like it's relying on them too much, uh, I, I can say, say I don't think folks are going to see that in this film at all. I hope not. I mean, I, I you know, my background uh, is in special effects. It's in uh, post-production. So I was able, you know, not only to, to write and direct the film, but then I, you know, I sit down and I actually dig in and, and, and go to work. Um, creating all the special effects and doing the editing. And um, that's another part of my career. So, yeah, I've got to keep the quality up and keep it high. And, and um, it, it turned out well. It's funny. Actually, last night, um, the actors from Los Angeles, uh, Charlie and Jeffrey and John and Lenata, we, we all got together to do kind of a, a, a launch party to kind of celebrate the, the birth of the movie um, as it hits the world. And it was fun. We, it was sort of. Uh, it's been a while since we watched it all together, and we weren't at, we weren't going to watch it because we've seen it a million times. But once we bought it on on Vudu, kind of ceremoniously, um, we we ended up all sitting there and watching it and enjoying it. And uh, now, people, folks will remember that the movie has been shown uh, in Jefferson City certainly several times, and and again, maybe they've heard of it by the the other title. But now they can find it on video on demand. And how do they do that? Um, the best way, because it's not, you know, it's not on the way that the way that works is you 
the distributor really has to sell it into every single cable system. And um, so there's a list of where it is available and where it's not available. You guys are on your, your media com out there, correct? There's a lot of media com here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, it, it's supposed to be there. Um, they've had some glitches with the rollout and uh, as, as it always happens, and uh, they're trying to get it up on Mediacom. It is supposed to be there, so if people are looking for it, just keep checking back. But they can go to our website at um, Haunting of Cell Block 11, number 11, Haunting of Cell Block 11.com, uh, and I've got a list there of everywhere that it's available. It's, it's on AT&T UVerse, it's on iTunes, it's on Vudu, it's on um, Amazon Instant, although they're backlogged as well. They're trying to get that up. Um, there's a whole list there, and, and including all the cable system that, that it's on, um, where people can get it on demand. Folks are going to recognize a lot of the scenery that they see in this movie, especially if they've taken some tours. They might recognize a lot of the folks from Jefferson City too, right? Absolutely. I mean, that, that, that's something that's really fun for me as a, as a director, is um, when I do go in, into a location, uh, into a, a new community, uh, to find the actors there and to, and to audition people. And Because there's a lot of great talent all over the country. It's not all in Los Angeles and New York. Um, and you guys have some tremendous actors there. I, I was there visiting recently, and I, um, a lot of our people were in two shows that were showing, um, Les Mis and uh, Spamalot. And I went to both of them, and I loved both of them. I enjoyed it so much and, and, and got to see some of our actors performing in a, in a different way, up on a stage, doing musicals. It was great. So I'm going to uh, roll just a little bit. I'm going to mute it, and we're going to roll just a little clip of the uh, one of the 30-second trailers here just so folks can get a snippet of that. But while we do that, I'm going to ask you uh, a couple more questions about the movie and talk about some of the actors that you did uh, bring in for this. Uh, you mentioned a couple of the names there already. Yeah. Um, uh, Charlie Coons, who is, if people watch the show Community, uh, he's, he plays a character called Fat Neil on that. That's a recurring character. They, they actually just found out they were picked up for a sixth season uh, because they were recently canceled. But um, I guess you, uh, Yahoo picked them up. So they're going to be back. All the actors are real excited about that. He's very excited. Uh, Jeffrey Johnson, who stars in the film as well. Jeffrey's uh, most well known <clears throat> most well known for his voiceover work. He's the voice of T-Mobile. Every time you see a commercial, which is about a hundred times an hour, uh, if you're watching TV, that's Jeffrey's voice in there, and he's a very accomplished actor. Uh, John Zdarko, um, you know, he's 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 a great actor from here in Los Angeles, and John's someone who came to acting late, later in life. <clears throat> so, um, and then we have Lenata Washington, who's actually my my wife, and. Uh, co-producer with me, and Lenata has been in the business for a very long time, have done tons of TV shows, um, but also movies, Killing Them Softly with Brad Pitt, and um, so she's been around the business a, a real long time. So we've got a really strong cast, and then um, Dee Wallace, of course, who you saw there in the, in the trailer, um, we all know Dee mostly as the mom from E.T., um, and she was in Cujo and The Howling, and she, you know, I wanted... She's kind of our, uh, our our name in the film, and I thought she was great because she has that sort of genre following for movies. All right, so again, the movie out on video on demand, and uh, you've had a lot of positive feedback from it so far? We have. Um, you know, I think the night before the film came out, I remember saying to Lenata, well, here we go. I mean, once you launch it, it's launched, and there are a lot of haters out there, and it's funny, I just, you know, I just saw something this morning that kind of made me bristle, and, and it just reminded me, because I've been through this before on other movies. The people that are negative, that really like to just get on the internet and just say negative things, they, they're out there writing all the time, and it's the people that enjoy something and just kind of move on with their lives, and they don't take the time to write, you know, and I remember going through this before on Kings of the Evening, um, a film that I did that came out in 2010, and it just happens, you know, but we are getting a lot of support as well. I mean, it moved up. I was watching the iTunes uh, most downloaded horror movies. Uh, there's a chart. I was watching it yesterday, and, you know, in a day we went from 70 to 40 to 34, and then, you know, it, you fall off the chart as well. It keeps going up and down, but um, it's an exciting process. It really is, and it's hard, you know, it, it, it's very personal as well. Um, 
Well, yeah, so yeah, there's going to be good reviews, bad reviews, but for the most part, people have really enjoyed this film. I wanted to make a movie that was just enjoyable to watch, and I, I think we accomplished that. So tell me what the, uh, the film's about. The film uh, is about a group of TV ghost hunters that have a show called Ghost Sightings, and the ratings aren't very good because they go into haunted places and they just can't get anything. They're just not getting any real paranormal activity or evidence. And so they're called in by the network uh, boss, who's played by Dee Wallace, and she basically puts it to him, if, you know, I need better shows. If you don't get something on tape, I'm going to replace you guys. So now with that threat, they head out, and they just figure we've got one more shot to really bring in a great show. And it leads them to uh, this haunted prison in the middle of the country. And the, uh, you know, big, beautiful location, it's the Missouri State Penitentiary. And um, it turns out to be um, a little more than they bargained for, and, and there is some real activity there, and then it's a fight for their lives. All right. And uh, now we've hounded you a couple of times in Missouri as well. Uh, you know, we've got some other great sites in the state. Is there any thought of a sequel? <clears throat> there was thought of a sequel um, right when we finished, and, and I actually started writing it. I, I wrote uh, about 60 pages of it. But then I realized, you know, i got to kind of put the brakes on a little bit and just see if there's uh, an, uh, a desire for a, a sequel from, from the public. Um, you know, we tend to fall in love with our, with our work, but it's now, it's now in, in the public's hands, and it's like if, if they would like to see a sequel, I've already written part of it. Um, however, I've got other projects that I'm trying to bring back to, to Missouri because it really was just such a fantastic experience working there. Uh, you know, I, I got home to Los Angeles, and it was very rough. The stuff that we shot here, it just reminded me how hard it is to shoot here. And, um, yeah, I vowed I will never shoot in Los Angeles again. And I started, you know, doing some research on the prison, what interesting stories are going on there. And so I've written, uh, I've written another script based on a true story um, that I'm shopping around. But that's a very, very big budget, very difficult film to do, period piece. And then I've got another one. I've got a uh, family film that I'm, that I'm going to write soon, and that uh, I'm hoping to bring back as well. So I loved shooting there, and I, I just can't wait to get back and shoot some more. What is it about Missouri that you enjoyed uh, in terms of shooting? It, it was just easy. I mean, just, just ease of, of everything and the friendly people. I mean, just everywhere we went, everyone just wants to help. And that's how it's, you know, in Los Angeles, it's, it's the business. It's the cottage industry. So... Anything you ask for, it's, you know, there's, okay, well, we'll, turn, we'll give you over to our location manager, and here's the fees, and, I mean, even if, and, and the permits, and the red tape, and, and the, you know, it's just, it goes on and on and on, but you get outside of Los Angeles, and people are actually still excited about the film industry, and it just makes it easier, because what we do is so hard already that we got to remove some of those barriers, and going to Missouri, everybody was helpful and friendly and excited. And um, and it has remained that way. They've just been, you know, so supportive of the film, and that's what it takes to get things done these days. You know, especially on a low budget. So we also just made a lot of friends. I mean, truly, I feel like we've made lifelong friends there. And going, you know, going there now feels almost like going home. You know, it's just we've spent so much time in Missouri now, and just everybody, everybody, the cast, everyone has nothing but but great things to say about their experience there. Well, and for my, for my small part in it, it, it was a lot of fun. And I will uh, tell folks, now, if you look real close at the end, you might see me in it, but uh, I almost have to be sitting next to you and tell you I'm there, so don't worry. Don't worry about that too hard. But uh, Andrew Jones, writer and director, Haunting of Cell Block 11 is now on video on demand, and thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, and please, you know, again, um, please support the arts and please uh, see the movie. It's not enough just to kind of drive, you know, do a drive-by like on Facebook. Everyone needs to be really proactive and see it and, and rent it and find it on demand. And um, that's, you know, that's the only way we can do more of these. It has to be successful and it takes the public to make it successful. So hauntingofcellblock11.com for all the information. Um, but go to your favorite place online or your cable system and, and, and just look for it because you'll probably find it. And, uh, and I think folks will enjoy it. I think you did a great job with it, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you.